I don't even know what episode number this is. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Knitting Pickle podcast. My name is Laura of Penrose Knits and Welcome back to all my lovely subscribers and hello if this is your first time watching one of my videos. It's been a little while since I filmed a formal podcast so it feels a little bit weird and I feel quite out of practice but hopefully you'll be okay. I've got the podcasting vibes. My fellow podcasters out there like there are some times when you film and you're like mmm and there are some times when you film and you're like yes I've got the podcast vibes today. <laughs> it is a Saturday afternoon and I wouldn't normally film at the weekend but I've had a very very busy week which I will go into in a little while um, and I've got another busy week coming up and I didn't want to miss this opportunity to film so the kids are home I'm downstairs in our spare bedroom um, so apologies if you can hear them crashing about upstairs or calling for me I'm also right opposite a road at the moment so because it's a Saturday there might be quite a bit of traffic but you got to work with what you've got we're in my spare bedroom possibly the nicest decorated house room in the house, <laughs> like nicer than my own bedroom. Um, I would have preferred to have been in my normal spot in front of my yarn stash, but it's just too noisy up there. And to be fair, in the week at the moment when I would normally film, it's so bright in there that it's impossible to film in there anyway. So we'll probably be in here for the remainder of the winter, though we are in February now, so we've not got long until spring. I'm going to do my best not to ramble today because I have got a lot to go over because it has been a while. <laughs> this isn't my first video of 2023, I did a what I knit in a week video which was super fun to make, it went down quite well, I'm really glad that you guys enjoyed it, um, it went down better than I thought it would to be honest, um, like traditionally the more vloggy type videos don't perform as well as podcasts but it did well so I'm pleased, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. And in that video I just kind of honed in on a few projects that I was working on at the time. Today we're going to cover everything. Everything since I last podcasted, but not including Vlogmas projects. If this is your first time watching me, I took part in Vlogmas this year. So if you want to find out about other projects and the recent projects, you can go and have a look at Vlogmas if you like. Um, but other than that, I'm just kind of going to go through what I've been working on since Christmas and there's quite a lot. I have been quite prolific. That tends to happen in January. After gift knitting my way through December and then like cast on all the things, I've had a huge creative surge. I've got like five different design ideas. I'm desperate to get going but I'm trying really hard just to focus on one at a time. <laughs> More on that later. Um, and I've also been doing some lovely other patterns by other designers to share with you. So let's go, let's go on with it. Go on with it? So let's get on with it. Um, I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. If you are not new around here, you will know this design. I'm wearing the Eclair, which is my latest pattern and is now available on Ravelry and hopefully my website. It might take a few extra days for it to hit my website because I have had some technical issues with my website but should be on Ravelry. I'm filming this on Saturday but it's going to go live on pattern release day so you can now get yourself a copy of the Eclair. This is the bobble free version as you can see it's a top down raglan cabled sweater though the sleeves are stockinette to give you a little bit of a break from the intense cabling. This version has no bobbles. The original version looks a little bit like this. I have got it here to show you um, and again if this is not your first time watching me, you'll be sick to death of this by now. <laughs> this is the original version. You can see we have like a polka dot style bobble and cable. It's super long. It's got a split hem. The idea with this was to make something that was as cosy as possible or what I like to call maximum cosy. That was my first sample that I made and this is the second sample without the bobbles because I had so many people ask me can you do it without the bobbles, is it okay if we did it without the bobbles, a couple of my testers wanted to do it without and I thought well people are going to want to see this so I enlisted the help of my wonderful sample knitter, test knitter and friend Leah and she made this beautiful stunning version because I just do not have the time to knit everything that I need samples for now. So 
they are both made out of Fulcolana Peruvian Highland wool, which is an, well, to me it's an iron white wool. Some people would say worsted, some people would say DK. But for me personally, I put it in the iron category. For me, it's made on five millimeter needles, but obviously whichever needles you need to get gauge. And I'm so proud of it. It has been the most difficult thing I've ever done, this design. I remember thinking the souffle was the hardest thing I'd ever done, but looking back at it now, obviously to be fair, that was the first like adult garment I properly graded, but it was a circular yoke, pretty simple construction. That was like, to use a very British term, a piece of piss. <laughs> I might beep that out. Um, it was so easy compared to this. This took me five days to write and grade. It's a compound raglan, which means for not all of the sizes, but most of them have different increase rates at different points in the yoke, on the sleeves and the body. And it was a very, very steep learning curve. To be fair, the edit was pretty good because I really got the hang of using spreadsheets. The edit went quite well. And then the test knit has been going for a few months and a lot has come up in the test knit. There's been quite a few changes. A lot of things I found it really difficult to get my head around because it's been so long since I actually wrote the pattern to then go in and be like, I did this, why did I do that and not that? It just, it's been a long, long process. And I've learned a lot. I've learned that as soon as I get that feeling about a design and I wanna go forward with it, I need to stick with it. I need to make it, write it, edit it, test it while it's all still fresh in my head. And that's what I'm gonna be trying to do, do moving forward in 2023. So there you go, that's the Eclair available now. You can get 15% off this design until Friday the 17th of February. And there's no code needed. It's automatically ap applied on Ravelry and hopefully in my website, on my website too. I'm struggling to talk today. I need to slow down. I need to take a minute. <laughs> so yes, get it while it's cheap, basically. So moving on. We're gonna follow the traditional format today and we're gonna have um, finished objects, whips, acquisitions. But before we go into that, I have a special little extra section which I'm going to call honorable mentions. And these are things that I have finished but don't have to hand to show you, but I do have pictures of. And I'm gonna do it in order that I finish them. So the first thing I finished after Christmas was the Hector's Bonnet by lovely, lovely Simone of Russ Knitwear. I don't know where it is. I think it's in one of the cars, but I can't currently find it. And it's basically a beautiful garter stitch bonnet shaped using short rows and it goes right up to age three to four, which I was really pleased about because I love bonnets on little girls, um, not just babies. So I made one for Penny. It was my Christmas day cast on and I finished it on Boxing Day and it was a pleasure to make and it's so, so adorable. And I used a DK weight sock yarn by Biff Sugar Yarns, one of my favorite hand dyers and it was in the shade Sleigh Ride. So very, very festive. And hopefully there will be a picture here or there has been a picture here. The next thing I finished, I made the Cargill Cowl by Rebecca of the Craya Bea. If you don't know what the Cargill is, where have you been? <laughs> she released the cowl version as a charity pattern for a while, which was incredible, and she made a lot of money for an amazing charity. And I decided to make it for my mum for her birthday present. I made it using Phil Kalana Saga, which is a lamb's wool, and a strand of Cardiff cashmere. Carl, that is hard to say. Cardiff cashmere brush light, which I originally bought to make myself a pair of penny gloves, but I decided that my mum deserved some cashmere it was lovely to make it was reasonably quick overall I think in terms of knitting time it was probably like a couple of days but it was a bit more spread out for me um, and it was just a very nice satisfying quick knit and it looks absolutely beautiful and of course the yarn is stunning the next thing I made that I don't have to hand, I made a hat for my friend's son. We have friends come to visit us for New Year. They also have a little boy, so obviously we're like not going out anywhere. It's hard to get babysitters on New Year and everything. So we invited them around for the evening and it had recently been his birthday. So I decided to make him a quick little hat. I made him a hat for when he was born, for his first birthday. I think I missed his second birthday, so this is his 
third hat for his third birthday and I made the just reminding myself what it's called it's the Taylor's rib beanie by Albiona McLaughlin and it's the first time I've knit one of her patterns actually and I really enjoyed it it was a really interesting construction it was a top down hat which I really really like I like a top down hat I find it fascinating so you increase on the top and then there is there is some shaping like around the head to help it fit closer to the head and then a folded rim it's rim rim yeah a folded rim it's all in rib and it was just really quick i knit it in one day i used drops nepal which was left over from my dartmoor sweater and yeah start to finish one day quick little present and it looks so adorable on him i chose like a nice kind of camely beigey browny color and it's very much my friend's color i think i did a good job there he looks adorable in it and I think that's it oh no there's one more honourable mention I have also finished a pair of mittens for my daughter Penny I show myself making those from start to finish in my last video in my what I knit in a week so if you're interested in those I go quite in depth with those and they were the world's simplest mittens by Tink and Knits I used two strands of superwash merino fingering one was um, merino by Along of It Anna and one was a sock yarn again by Biff Sugar Yarns that was like a variegated speckly guy so they were again a quick knit knit them in a day but that was a whole day of knitting I had nothing else to do that day and she wears them almost every day and she loves them and she's so proud of them and it's a fabulous free quick wonderful pattern so that is quite a lot actually isn't it I obviously went on a little bit of an accessory kind of um binge that doesn't seem like the right word I knit a lot of accessories in a short time and that was probably a direct reaction to all the garment knitting that I had been doing. The slog that was my husband's Christmas present which was the Big Love Cardigan by Anchor Strick which no I have not finished yet. Honestly every time I finish a project I'm like right I'm going to do that one next. I'll just finish this one and then I'll finish the cardigan. But Oh, I just got to follow that dopamine and there are so many other things I'd rather work on than that thing. Honestly, I was so scarred by it, but fortunately my husband is wonderful and he doesn't mind. I did think about trying to get it finished in time for Valentine's Day, but that is in three days and as I've said, I've had a very busy week. I had a very busy week because I've been writing the final pattern, creating the final document for the Eclair and I had some major technical issues. I got set back by about two days and it's been quite stressful and intense and I've not actually done much knitting in the past few days because that's kind of taken over all of my brain power and then I've just been too tired and I've done a few rows here and there but nothing major so and next week is a really really busy week because we have the release we are also going on holiday to Tenerife this time next week I will be in Tenerife we will have landed the kids will be going crazy I'll already have had enough but there will be a pool and it will be warm so yeah lots going on next week so I don't think it's realistic for me to try and get that done by then we'll talk a little bit more about holiday later actually no do you know what? I'm going to talk about it now because I'd like to ask your advice I'm going on holiday I would like to take a project with me I don't know what to take with me I've got some ideas and when I show you my acquisitions later it's possible that I might take one of those with me but ideally I would like to take a project with me that isn't too big, that's portable and that uses only like a single skein of yarn. Not total but I mean like one strand. I don't want to be carrying around like two strands held together because obviously it gets all like knotty and stuff and difficult to manage. I don't want... Oh! I've forgotten a project. Have I? Or is it in my basket? That reminds me. <laughs> I don't want to take a sock. Um, I don't really know why, but it doesn't feel right knitting on a sock um, on a holiday, on a summer holiday. <laughs> so yeah, I need a summery project to do that's one single strand, maybe DK. I know that a lot of you are going to say, you know, do something fingering. It will take a long time. But I feel like I probably get bored of that quite quickly. I don't know. I might do a fingering project. I might do a fingering weight camisole because I would like to have one. Um, I don't know. If you've got any ideas as to what I could take on holiday with me, any patterns, something light, something easy, something stockinette or rib, nothing too complicated, 
that's portable. If something springs to mind instantly, don't go researching or anything, don't worry about that, but if something pops into your mind, let me know in the comments. Anyway, moving on, let's actually show you some actual knitwear. <laughs> right, the first finished object I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hold up and then I'm gonna put it on. We have quite possibly the fluffiest thing in history. This is the Soho blouse by Kadri and this was a test knit. This was my first like finished garment of um, January and I knit it all throughout Jan January and it was like I mentioned a test knit and whilst we're here I just need to mention that this yarn was sent to me it was sponsored for the test knit the yarn is the Pasquale Manada and it is mohair but next level and I'll go into that in a minute but I'm just gonna pop it on and show you first I'll give you a little close-up so you can see the stunning texture and all the floof Here she is. Oh, it feels weird showing like so much skin. I'm probably going to keep this on for the rest of the episode now because we've all seen the eclair. We've had enough of that. Let's make room for something new. So this is a Soho blouse by Kadri. As I mentioned, it is a top-down raglan V-neck blouse done in garter stitch. My first garter stitch garment, and I am obsessed with it. I am wearing this a lot at the moment. My favourite time to wear it is over my gym stuff. <laughs> you know, like we go into and from the gym and like I'll always be running errands after and it's like just chuck it on and it just gives that kind of like relaxed yoga kind of vibe. But I also really like wearing it with like jeans and stuff. It makes me feel quite posh, it makes me feel quite fancy. This was really enjoyable to knit. Obviously it's garter stitched and the first section is worked flat so it's just knit either side but then the body and the sleeves are garter stitching around so you are knit pearl, knit pearl, knit pearl. So if you detest purling a lot this might not be for you but I do find like on the body and stuff it's kind of quite therapeutic and actually I noticed that for the first time in this project I was purling without looking which hasn't happened before. I can knit without looking, no problem. But I actually noticed this time that I was purling away on my body and watching the telly and not actually looking down. So it's a great project if you want to improve your purling. I did struggle a little bit on the sleeves with the small circumference and all the purling, but that's a me problem. That's just like me and my hands. And I think because I was also knitting a lot this month, it was probably also to do with that, not just purling on a small circumference. There are some really clever design details in this one. It has an applied I-cord edging and it also has a faux seam. So I'll show you on the sleeve because it's a bit easier. Because garter stitch can be really, really stretchy, Sabina was super clever and integrated a faux seam in the sleeves and down the side of the body. It's worked within the garment, there is no actual seaming. It's done using slip stitches and it's brilliant because it really helps um, the garment hold its shape and not just sag. Now I will say in the test knit quite a few people used superwash merino and mohair together and their garments grew quite a lot which is obviously normal for superwash merino but when also combined with garter stitch it, they really did grow in some cases so I would say steer clear of superwash merino for this design if you're considering making it um, and I would highly 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 recommend the yarn suggested in the pattern. It is stunning. So it's not just your kind of normal mohair silk blend, it's got merino and it's got yak in it. Now this is just my impression of the yarn but I feel like it's the yak that really gives this yarn its floof. When you hold it next to a normal mohair you can see that the, the staple length of some of the fibres that are kind of spun around the silk core are so long so much longer than mohair and again I might be incorrect I'm not a um, I'm not the biggest I don't have the biggest fiber knowledge I could actually email the yarn company um, and ask about that maybe I will but basically something about the combination of fibers in this yarn makes it so incredibly fluffy there are two strands held without and I use the shade 204 nature so like natural 
if you're interested. There are loads and loads of lovely shades. Um, I don't know how available it is in the UK. Mine came from Germany, I think. Definitely came from Europe. It came really quick, actually. Um, but I think there are some UK suppliers. I will try and link a supplier down in a UK supplier in the description box if I can, but I'm not too sure. But that is my Soho blouse. It's super wearable. I'm surprised at how much I like wearing it. I decided to apply for the test knit because I've got nothing like this in my wardrobe at all. It's kind of got that kind of cumulus tee vibe, but the garter stitch just gives it a real extra kind of squish. Kind of makes it a little bit more like colder month leaning, I think. The cumulus is quite summer leaning, even though it's a mohair garment, I think. You still kind of think summer when you think cumulus. This has a, a little bit more of a transitional vibe to it. And honestly, I have been walking around wearing this with nothing underneath, literally just a bra, under, bra underneath, like a little crop top underneath. And I don't feel any form of itch whatsoever on my skin. That's how soft and lovely this is. Doesn't mean you won't find it itchy. Obviously everyone's different, but I can happily tolerate mohair, but I do sometimes get like a little initial like, mm, and then when it like warms up to my body temperature, I don't feel it anymore. But this, not a single moment has this felt uncomfortable on my skin. So yeah, basically it's the perfect combination, this yarn and this design. I love it so much. So that's the Soho blouse and as she's now available. I feel like I'm talking really fast. 24 minutes in already. I have one other finished object to show you, but it's technically two, but they are the same, kind of. I've got quite a lot to say about these. My next finished object is something that I cast on, cast the first one on I think three weeks ago and it's already in testing. What was I saying about focusing on one design at a time? I had this idea, actually no, let's start with the yarn. I had this yarn in stash for a long time, originally destined to be accessories but, and I did make some accessories with it. It was a design, but I kind of put them down to work on something else, never really went back to them and kind of just like said goodbye to that one. But I had quite a lot of this yarn left over, but I just had a small quantity of each color. And I was looking at my yarn stash a few weeks ago and I just thought, why have I never thought to put those two colors together? They'd be so beautiful, like striped together. And then the moment I had the idea, the design just went, made itself known in my head and I was like we're casting on baby <laughs> and I did and it was just it just like fell out of me <laughs> this design honestly some designs take a lot of slog and a lot of hard work and sometimes they make it sometimes they don't but this one just fell out of my brain onto the needles into the world wrote it graded it edited it put it into test and we are all set to release early March 2023. This is the sibling sweater. <laughs> yes, it is a child's sweater. And oh my God, I'm just obsessed with it. And they're like kind of, the main focus of this design, other than the stripes, is my shoulder detail. I'm so proud of this shoulder. I love it so much. I'm such a big fan of when like knitting meets at several different points in like an intersection and it's just, do you know what it does? It tickles my knitting pickle. It's been a long time since I've said that. It's been a long time since something really has tickled me. But this, it just, uh, it gets me. I look at it and I'm like, this is knitting. This is how amazing knitting is and I love it. So it's worked, you work the back piece first and then you pick up the shoulders work the front, join in the neck, work the front, join at the underarms, work in the round, pick up the sleeves, work in the round. You kind of normal drop shoulder construction really, but it has, it's just this little detail here. So originally when I first had this idea, what I wanted was for this kind of column that comes down here to be one color. And I was going to use Intarsia to have the stripe just meeting that there so that probably would have all been like the rust color or maybe the pink and then it would have come down into the stripe and I tried a few different methods but increasing at the point where you 
twist your yarn and serintage doesn't really work. It did work in theory, but it looked messy and I couldn't make it neat. So in the end, I just thought, do you know what? Let's just carry the stripe up that little angle and see if we like it. And I really, really, really liked it. The moment I did it, I was like, we're on to a winner here. And so as soon as I had worked this kind of top section of the back, I washed and blocked it and treated this as my swatch. And from there, I pretty much wrote and graded the pattern in one go, mostly. But then I kind of knit along with my own writing and grading process. There was more to this in the pattern writing than there was the grading, funnily enough, because actually, you know, grading this for children, a drop shoulder construction, it was quite simple, the numbers were quite easy. There were a little bit of, the test has brought out a couple of issues with um, the row gauge and um, where it finishes and stuff, but other than that, it was pretty simple. The main <laughs> issue I had when writing this pattern was getting the right sleeve length and the body lengths whilst maintaining the striping pattern so that we ended on a contrast stripe so that we could do the rib in the main colour stripe and basically I, I had to work in increments of this and actually children's garments from size to size don't vary hugely so sometimes it might actually be the difference between a size and like length is more like this but I've obviously can only go in increments of this so it was a bit of a brain kind of exercise to get that and especially on the sleeves it did take me a few goes and then there was a little bit of back and forth with my editor over editor over it and in the end I just made a spreadsheet of my stripe pattern and kind of marked out where everything happens just to make sure everything ends in the right spot and again a little bit of adjustment in the test knit but I think we're at the point now where the major issues are done and people are just knitting and knitting and knitting and there are some really, really amazing colour combinations. I'm like, it's my favourite bit of the whole process, I think, is seeing the testers' colours and what they choose and kind of seeing them come to life. We've got rainbow stripes, we've got rainbow and white stripes, we've got bright pink and white, we've got loads of different colours, a few people are doing more than one colour, we've got subtle, we've got bright, we've got everything in this test knit and I'm so excited to see them all finished. So this was my very first sample, this is for my daughter Penny, she is three years old but for her I made the size five to six because I wanted the maximum ease and so that she would kind of grow into it. However, I did the lengths for her age, three to four length in the body. I wish I'd done the sleeve length for her actual size, which would be three to four because the sleeves are a little bit long, but that doesn't really matter because she will, you know, it just means I won't have to lengthen the sleeves as she grows. Penny's version has the split hem. I couldn't resist. It's just little, it's just subtle, but I think when you've got something oversized, having that split hem just kind of helps that oversize sit like nice and flat and the ribbing doesn't pull the garment in. Speaking of which, I have a second sample. Oh my gosh, I haven't even said what the yarn is. This sample is the Along Avec Anna Merino, which is the fingering weight yarn held with a strand of the Along Avec Anna Silk Mohair. Silk mohair for a child, you say? Are you mad? No, I'm not mad. This is one of the softest silk mohairs I've ever encountered. I remember when I first got it, messaging Anna being like, wow, this is so, so soft. And she explained that a lot is to do with the fact that it is cruel, cruelty free mohair and silk and that the silk is of, of a very very high quality which ultimately adds to the softness. Penny has worn this without anything underneath with a t-shirt underneath and hasn't complained about it at all though she is quite tolerant of anything woolly and always has been. But for those of you out there whose children are not a fan of mohair there's an option B and I've like oh I've got so much fluff. And for those of you out there whose children are not a fan of mohair, which is probably most children, fortunately, along with Ek Anna, have a double merino, which is a DK weight superwash merino, just like the fingering weight, but in DK. And I have 
another sample for you in the double merino. This is a version for my son. So this is the next size up. This is the size six to seven. My son is five years old, but again, I wanted the like maximum recommended ease. And I did his, the all the recommended lengths as well. So the sleeve length and the body length, and it's definitely big on him, but that's kind of what I wanted. It's meant to be oversized and I want it to last as long as possible. You can see the back detail here and for this version I didn't do the split hem there are instructions in the pattern for both split hem and normal hem but for my son I thought he would probably I mean he doesn't have a preference but I just feel like the normal hem would suit him more than the split hem because it kind of the length for him is a little bit kind of more like average jumper length the normal hem worked whereas for Penny it's a little bit longer because she's quite short and it goes over her bum and it kind of like the split hem I think just looks a bit better on her because she wears it with leggings whereas Jeff wears it with trousers so you can see what it looks like with a regular hem and yeah this is using the double merino which is a super wash 100% merino now I am not normally someone who would use super wash even for children because I don't like how much it grows and I often find I was talking to Anna about this with superwash merino you get this thing where you knit it and it's almost like one leg of the stitch ends up being smaller than the other leg of the stitch and you kind of get this column effect in your knit fabric which is another reason why I'm not so keen on your kind of like normal superwash merinos the um my other children's pattern the petite souffle is made using alpaca and other things I've knit for Penny are usually in like a normal wool unless it's like an accessory that will need to go through the wash a lot in which case I will use Superwash Merino but for a garment it's not something I normally lean to and I am so incredibly impressed by this yarn I can't even tell you when I blocked it I put it on the blocking mats I did the smoosh so I was very careful not to stretch it at all when it was wet I laid it gently on the mats and you kind of pat and smoosh. Andrew Mowry describes this, was, this as well and when she described it I was like ah oh, somebody else does the pattern smoosh and you're kind of pushing everything in rather than stretching it out like blocking isn't necessarily just about making things bigger or whatever it can be about kind of pushing the stitches all back in together so that they're not stretched out when they're drying and when it was blocking it was blocking at the exact measurements it was supposed to be no growth whatsoever and I was just like wow who knew a super wash merino could not would not like grow massively so if you do want to make this in a super wash merino get some of this stuff I should probably tell you the colors as well this is royal and dune dune is so interesting because here in the viewfinder it looks gray in real life it looks beige and in some lights it looks almost pink so it's a beautiful color i think this for something on its own would be so lovely and held with the mohair as well so that's dune and royal pennies is um the kind of brick rust color is tomate tomat tomate tomat i think it's like a, a tile like a terracotta tile and the pink is tourmaline such a beautiful combo oh, what one for myself <laughs> Those are the sibling sweaters. Um, I decided to call it the sibling sweater because I knew from the very, very start that I wanted one for Jeff and Penny. And it was one of those where the, the name just like came to me in an instant and it was like exactly perfect, the first name I thought of. And I'm so, so excited for it. So that is mainly what I've been working on in January. This guy, those guys, and has there been anything else in between? No other finished objects, but I do have some whips to show you. We'll probably stay on the subject while we're here, even though this is my most recently cast on whip. We're seeing as we're talking about the sibling sweater. I could not resist. <laughs> and I have cast on and I'm in the process. Oh my God, I haven't even finished the row. I should probably finish the row, shouldn't I, before I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because I was working on this last night and then my husband and I like started to have a conversation so I had to put it down and give him my full attention okay there we go I can show you now 
I wonder if you can guess what I'm about to show you. It's a very small bit and it's going to be tricky to show you, but I caved and I cast on a sibling sweater my size. Yay! Look at this. Woohoo! <laughs> This colour combo was completely inspired by one of the test knitters who's doing this, the children's sibling sweater. Their kind of contrast was a little bit lighter, I think, um, but I had this in stash, so I wanted to use it. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I haven't really done very much. This is the back piece. But I have done the initial grading. Uh, it, it's likely that it will change kind of throughout the process and I'm kind of writing the pattern as I go but because I have already graded and written the children's size I can use that spreadsheet and that document for the adult size so it's actually nowhere near as much work as it normally would be and I decided to go straight into the adult one initially I was going to like wait and think hang on a minute thinking about seasonality I should probably start thinking about some summer designs maybe we'll leave this one till autumn but then I thought no You'll never come back to it, Laura. And right now, the numbers, the constructions, any kind of potential problems are all here fresh in my brain. Let's go straight on to this. So I did. I followed the dopamine and that's where we are right now. This is not the Alongovec Anna um, yarn. I decided I'd, I was gonna, I was very, very, very tempted to make it for myself in these exact colors, but I decided to use some stash because even though I will never ever ever put myself on a yarn ban I am conscious that my stash is getting quite large now and I'm running out of space to store it so it's kind of like a either like a one in one out thing or only buy yarn that has an immediate intention like no kind of random yarn buying apart from one thing which I'm going to show you in a minute <laughs> Um, so this is Sadness Garn, Double Sunday, I think they're both the Petite Knit collaboration, you've got Whipped Cream and you've got Camel, I bought them at quite different times from different places, but I just really really liked this combination. When it comes to my wardrobe I'm very very basic, I'm black, white, brown, beige, that's about it. Sometimes red, sometimes very pale blue in the summer, sometimes khaki green, but overall these are my colours and I had them both in stash and I didn't quite have a sweater quantity of this and it's been sat there not knowing what to do with it for ages and now we have an answer because you need less of this than you do of this. So I'm hoping to um, finish the grading and writing of the pattern in the same way I did for the sibling sweater as I'm making it and as soon as I'm confident in those numbers it will go off to my editor and I will finish the sample whilst we are editing. This is basically cold now. And then that will go into test as soon as it's ready. I am still operating private testing and by that what I mean is, is I've got like a pool of test knitters who I have worked with in the past, got all the names in a document and email and I send them invites to test for me and if I don't manage to fill all of the sizes from my current testing pool I will put out a public call but so far for the eclair and for the sibling I've managed to fill those slots with my current testers and I do that because I was finding the traditional way of doing a big public call with a form and loads of people applying stuff just far too stressful. I was getting hundreds of applicants which is amazing but number one it was a lot of work to do hours and hours and hours of work and two I felt a lot of guilt and a lot of anxiety about not being able to choose everybody so I decided to put my own mental health first and I'm now doing private tests. Doesn't mean there won't ever be public calls again I might find I've got the mental space for it and now that I'm really kind of reining it in and only working on one design at a time it might free up some headspace for public test knits but we will see um so that is my first whip the next whip i'm going to show you i'm just going to make sure i've got it with me so this is technically my first cast on of 2023 just after my birthday i got covid yay but it wasn't too bad it was like one day of feeling pretty rough and staying in bed but after that i was okay and i needed just like a small simple satisfying project so i cast on a sock my first sock in a long 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 time and i am using my advent yarn if you join me for vlogmas you'll know that i had the woolly mammoth fiber advent which was a 12 day advent with 20 gram sock natural sock yarn skeins 
and it was such fun to open and the plan was always to make like stripy scrappy socks with it so I picked out the four colours that kind of spoke to me the most I did play around with like different groupings and kind of different combinations and stuff but in the end I was like I'm loving these pinks I'm just going to go for the pinks and I was going to try and get a pair of socks out of three mini skeins but in the end I realised that wasn't really going to work so I decided to use four and here we have sock number one. It's just a lovely stripy sock. So in here you have four colours. I've kept, I've been a good podcaster and I've kept the labels. If I can remember which one is which is unlikely. But we have a dark purple, a peachy, a pink and another kind of bluey purple it's kind of like a brownie purple that's a bluey purple but I wanted something that was like a, a high contrast stripe in there in the camera they're not the contrast isn't showing as well between the pink and the beige but it is actually enough of a contrast in real life I think and there is like ever such a tiny hint of a speckle literally like she just did like one speckle so every now and then you just get a little moment of yellow in the pink or a little moment of pink in the beige and some of them are more kind of like tonal or kind of semi-solid but that is my first sock I did an absolutely awful job of carrying my yarn I was basically when you when you twist your your yarns together in the back of your work when you're striping to avoid holes where you change colour, um, it's better to turn one way than the other. And I was basically kind of turning the wrong way, and it just looked quite messy. And I was also carrying more than one colour at once. So I think if you, yeah, do you know what? I can show you here because it, it's good because I learnt this lesson and I then used that learnt that learnt, that learning in my um, sibling sweaters. So when I show you this close up, you'll see that you can see the yarns I'm carrying and they're kind of behind a straight stitch, almost like a ladder. That's the wrong way to do it. And it's kind of like, you can see, you can just, yeah, doesn't look great. <laughs> you can see the carried yarn between the stitches. Whereas on the sibling sweater, where I've carried the yarns, let's find which side it is. You can see that you cannot see the yarn. You, there's, a, there's a crease because that's how I blocked it, but you cannot see the yarn at all. Did I forget to do a jogless? Yeah, you can also see that, you see here that we have jogless stripes. Instructions are in the pattern, but I forgot here. <laughs> but when you, more importantly, when you look at the carried yarn on the inside, you will see that instead of like having a straight carried yarn and bars going across, it's more like a kind of twist. And that is the correct way to carry your yarns in a strike. But it's a sock, I don't really mind. I'm honestly not that kind of fussed about the quality of the socks that I make because they just go on my feet and I wear them around the house. Um, and this also hasn't been blocked yet. And like I say, don't knock it till you block it. And what I wanted to do with these socks was to get the most out of every single scrap of yarn. So what I did was I took my little mini skeins and I hand wound them and I've got a pair of digital scales that go to like 0.3 of a gram. They're really, really accurate. They're really inexpensive, just from Amazon, nothing special at all. I use them for baking as well, but I would take the skein and get the exact measurement of it. And then I would start hand winding it into a ball and keep weighing it so that I ended up with two balls that were pretty much the same weight, give or take a, a gram or two here and there, because you can't be perfect. And then I separated off the smaller of the two balls for my first sock and the larger of the two balls for my second sock. And that is so that I know no matter how many stripes I get out of it, I will have enough yarn for my second sock. So I went toe up again so that I could make sure I could make the most of my yarn and get as many stripes as possible and actually funnily enough it worked out so beautifully completely unplanned so I used one color for the toe heel and cuff and like I said I went toe up I did a wedge toe and then I did a shadow wrap short row heel and I just kind of 
striped as I went and then I kept going kept going kept going kept going until I had run out of my first kind of ball of stripe and I think it was this one I've definitely still got more of the the lighter colors left and then I did a cuff until I had pretty much run out of this and then I still had like a tiny little bit left of all my other colors so I just did two rounds so it's effectively broken rib I would like knit around knit pearl around knit around knit pearl around just right on the top of the cuff just because you know it looks nice and it's kind of like a little interesting point and again it uses up as much yarn as possible so I haven't cast on the second sock yet I am quite a big sufferer of second sock syndrome but I'm also like not beating myself up about that because it doesn't really matter there will come a time when I'm ready to cast on another sock between projects and I have everything saved here all grouped together ready to go so that when I am ready to cast on I can I use magic loop for this one um though I kind of wish I'd used my small circular because I think it probably would have gone like a little bit quicker but I think because I was like striping three different yarns at once I thought it would probably be easier in magic loop I'm not too sure but obviously I have to knit the second sock on magic loop so that they match so that's my first proper cast on of 2023 really and then I have another whip that I have cast on this year but have put down for a little while and it's going to be a slow burn this one <laughs> this is something very very out of the ordinary for me if you've been with me for a while you'll know that I'm not really much of a shawl knitter I have knit a few shawls but they've always been for other people apart from the Sophie shawl which I knit for myself last year but I would call that more of a scarf it's not what I would call a shawl really I don't wear it as a shawl it wraps around like a scarf but the little mini one is the Sophie scarf but I made like the big one um, but I have a shawl right here. I have done the West Knits Cal twice. I completed shawlography. I did not finish last year's one twists and turns because I hated it. Um, but I then instead made the Rolling Hills shawl and they were both for my grandma for her birthday in December. And I've also made the Humbly Bee shawl by Fibre Tales for my mother-in-law. And I decided this year that I was gonna cast on my grandma's birthday shawl in January yes it's 11 months until her birthday and I've already cast on her present I refuse this year to be stressed out by gift knitting in December so I am starting right now <laughs> I will not be making my husband a jumper for Christmas this year because he's getting one for our anniversary um, but I thought do you know what I'm just gonna cast this on now at the time I cast it on I was really in the mood for it I just wanted something repetitive and enjoyable and different to anything that I'd been doing and this is a pattern that I've seen a number of times before and is one of the few shawl patterns that I've seen and I've thought oh really want to make that like that looks like it would be very enjoyable I love the finished thing it looks so effective it's like nothing I've ever done before and I've seen quite a few versions from the wonderful Amy Palco and I'm pretty sure I've like my camera cut out I'm pretty sure that I have copied one of her yarn combos here I've definitely tried to recreate the original yarn combination as close as possible because I love the original colour combination it's something I would never think to do so without further ado we have the Cinnabar Shawl by Andrea Mowry, my first Andrea Mowry pattern and as you can see it's the exact, well not the exact combination that she uses, she originally uses spin cycle yarns for this shawl but I wasn't willing to pay for that, maybe one day, we'll see, instead I used a yarn that she also recommends as a substitute for the spin cycle and it's the Crazy Salba Ball which is this fun colour changing yarn that's all reds and oranges and purples and alongside it I'm using Loch Lomond by BC Garn which is something I've never used before which is lovely it's a hundred percent wool it's very soft and it's got ever such a slight tweed to it I just wanted something I didn't want my other colour to be completely flat I still wanted something interesting in there but it's very very subtle it's almost more like a melange than a tweed but there are tweedy bits but anyway, if you've not seen the Cinnabar shawl before, it's an asymmetric shawl where you've got 
uh, brioche on one side and garter on the other side. It's done in a really clever way where you work across the shawl once in one colour and then you work across it again in your other colour and then you turn it and you work back again and it means that you're you know there's no colour work involved here and you get the two colour brioche so you can see on this side that the colourful yarn kind of pops forward and on this side the grey pops forward and you actually have stripes where you switch which yarns you're using which is so clever and just kind of breaks it up a little bit and it's a lot more kind of muted and subtle in the garter side and the brioche pops out a lot more obviously the brioche side is bigger than the garter side but it's just one of those it's just a really clever piece of knitting and a clever construction and I think the thing about shawl knitting for me that I would never found that appealing was you're just making a piece of fabric and that never really appealed to me. For me it's all about like garments and construction and interest and change and stuff but this kind of you don't get that because you've got an interesting shape fabric, you've got different stitch patterns and it changes up and it's just it's just really fun to work on really really enjoyable and now that I'm holding it up again I really want to carry on with this but I've completely forgotten how to do this now it's been a couple of weeks since I worked on it so I'd have to familiarize myself maybe this one will be a good one to take on holiday I know I said only like one ball of yarn but it would be good how amazing would it be if I could have my grandma's shawl finished like months and months and months in advance would I be able to wait until December and to not and not give it to her i don't know but basically the idea of this project is that it is to pick up and put down as and when i like no pressure it might be that i don't pick it up again until no november like a month before her birthday but at least i've got a head start at least the decision has been made and i can kind of do little bits here and there over the time so we have no stressful knitting in december so I have one whip left, it's super super special, it's like the love affair of January and if you follow me on Instagram you'll know all about this, super exciting. I was having a little look on Etsy for a yarn that I will show you in a little while and whilst I was there I stumbled across a different yarn which blew me away and I added to cart instantly without even considering it, it was like right I need to own that yarn and I need it now. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the yarn because I since had to order more. Because I was so excited about it I didn't look at the specs, I didn't look at the yardage, I didn't look at the weight, I just added to cart and I thought yes that will be enough to make something for Penny, easy peasy, let's go. And it wasn't enough to make something for Penny. I mean, I probably could have found something maybe, but the thing I wanted to make wasn't quite enough. So I ordered another skein of it and the lovely yarn dyer who makes it sent me an extra skein to say thank you because I shared it on Instagram and quite a few of you guys went over and followed her after seeing it on my page. So thank you to everyone who's gone to support this yarn maker. Oh, I've lost the label. I think my son pulled it off, but that's good because it means I can show you. This fabulous yarn that I'm teasing you about is this bad boy. This is by Cheshire Yarn Hand Dyed, and it's basically the rainbow speckle of dreams. It is a lace weight, 75% baby Surrey alpaca, 25% silk, 300 meters per 50 grams. I've never used a Surrey alpaca before and I'm like, why? How have I gone so long in my knitting career and not used this type of yarn before? It is stunning. It's so soft, it's so lovely. I mean, I'm feeling this and it's squishy and soft AF, but so is this. So I think, do you know what? They feel kind of pretty similar in softness. So if you're not a fan of the mohair, if you're allergic to it or anything like that, a lot of people find they get on with alpaca instead. Sorry, alpacas, you guys. And I just thought it was the most fun rainbow speckle that I'd seen. And when I saw it, I just thought, this is my daughter through and through. She would absolutely love this. I'm going to hold up the one that hasn't got the label on because you can really see just how fun this is. I hope my camera can do it justice. We are losing the light a little bit now. It's quite late in the afternoon. I will hide.
Isn't it just amazing? It's like neon pops. But it's also got like darks. It's like, I think it's quite brave in like color choice. And the moment I received it, I was like, I need to make something with this right now. Like right this second. I want a plain top down raglan stockinette, no fuss, super simple, let's go. So of course, I decided to make the Monday Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. <laughs> when I want a pattern I can pick up and go, I go Petite Knit because I know I enjoy her patterns, I know I like the way they're written, I know they're written well, I know that I'm, you know, gonna get what I want basically and I wanted to not have to think about anything. I think I had just finished grading the um, sibling sweater and I just wanted like a break from numbers and I just wanted something really mindless where the yarn could really sing and I think I made an excellent choice. <gasps> Isn't she just insane? She's so amazing. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a close-up. It's just the most beautiful thing in the world. I'm not holding it on its own. I'm not holding it double. I'm holding it with a strand of fingering weight mystery yarn. I got this yarn from a craft show and there was a hand dye that was closing down. So she was selling off all her skeins really cheap. And this was just like an undyed fingering weight yarn. I can't remember the exact combination, but I do know that it was quite a luxurious one. I think it was merino and alpaca and silk, maybe even a bit of cashmere. I'm not too sure, but it is mega, mega soft and squishy. And I had two skeins of it. I used um, the first skein as part of my holiday slip over and the second part of the first skein for this and this is the second skein I'll probably have quite a bit left over but it was just the perfect pairing really because I, f I mean I don't know I feel like this is speckled on a an undyed natural I don't know specifically but there you go this is the Monday sweater for my dear daughter Penelope and I smashed this out everything you see here was in less than two days and most of it was in one day I just couldn't stop there's something addictive about when you're working and it's just white 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 neon pink white 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 purple blue oh my god green yellow and it's like every time a color pops onto your needles it's like a little it's like a little hit it's like a dopamine dopamine hit like a little rush and you just live for that moment and you just want it to happen again and it's just so Addictive. I enjoyed it so much and I'm really really excited to kind of finish this off now I've, I haven't even got that much to go and it's on four millimeter. Is it four? Yeah, four millimeter needles and I've just got the rest of the body to go my daughter's not that tall So not very much at all But as I said, I ran out so I had to stop and wait for my next one to arrive And I'm like honestly so grateful that she sent me another one because I've been looking at the yardage and if I have minimum half of my spare skein left I can use this to make a marble sweater for Penny which is basically exactly the same as this but like super chunky um, which is what I'm currently leaning towards because I think it would be really fun but I might hold this with like I've got some pink drops air and kind of see what how this looks on like a pink background rather than a white or I could make some accessories for her. I would really like to make her an everyday balaclava for nursery, but I don't think this would be appropriate for that because it would be all around her face. It would get in her mouth. I think we need something smooth, super wash for that. But maybe a hat, maybe a little neck or a collar. I'm not too sure, but I would like this to be another garment because it's just so fun. I could do a cardigan instead, actually. So she's got a little bit more, um, she's got another option. Nice for summer evenings. So there is one thing about this that I do need to kind of, um, not address, but I kind of want to talk about. Um, I didn't, obviously I didn't alternate, alternate skeins for this. I didn't think I would need to. And I thought if I did need to alternate skeins, if anything, it would be on the body. But I have noticed that we have kind of got a lot more speckle concentration here, kind of this side in this part of the garment, and it kind of fades out to not very much further down. There is less on the sleeves, but it's still quite evenly speckled all the way round. Whereas on the body, we kind of have some quite large 
patches of white compared to this up here. Now, I'm not the most experienced with hand dyed yarn, but I do feel like even if I had alternated skeins, that wouldn't have fixed the problem because it's almost like there was, like, it's almost like the speckles weren't that evenly speckled across the skein. I don't know. Someone in the comments let me know. Those of you who work with hand dyed yarn a lot more, is this just because I didn't alternate skeins or is this because of like an uneven speckle on the actual skein itself? Overall, I don't really mind. I don't really care. Penny won't care. It still looks absolutely amazing. But I'm just curious to know as to why that happened because I would like to make an adult garment using hand dyed speckled mohair for myself and it's like a white background with a dark speckle on it and I want to avoid this kind of thing happening. So let me know what you think and why this happened. I'm also not too stressed about it because what I'm gonna do once I've finished, if I do have any of the obvious big patches of white, is I'm just gonna go in and duplicate stitch and add some speckles in. I've already trialed it. These, these speckles here are duplicate stitch. Can you tell? No. So what I'll probably do when I'm finished is I'll just get, I'll find a bit of the strand of the Suri that's like heavily speckled and I'll just kind of weave it in along the back and when a speckle comes up I'll just push it through and duplicate stitch and then weave along the back, push it through duplicate, just to kind of fill in those kind of big spaces of white. But I'm not going to worry too much about it. Hopefully it won't be super noticeable when I move on to my next skein. But what I'll probably do is I'll wind them both up and then see how they look compared. I don't know, again, I'm not that bothered. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? It's just so lovely. I don't know what I'm thinking making my daughter something white. She is the messiest child in the world, but she does now understand when mummy says, take your jumper off before you eat your chocolate ice cream, darling. <laughs> So that leads us quite smoothly into acquisitions, doesn't it? Because that's kind of like what we've got here and that. I do have a few acquisitions. I'm not gonna dwell on them for too long because otherwise we'll be, this will be a very, 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 very long episode. Though I'm not adverse to a long episode, as you might know. Let's stick to the hand-eyed theme I'm having a bit of a moment if I'm honest traditionally I'm not normally a hand dyed girl I can't be doing with alternating skeins I can't be doing with the stress of is it gonna pull is it not gonna pull um I just and also I I personally wouldn't wear something that's like heavily variegated or heavily speckled because it's just too overwhelming for me I prefer like a single color um but I think I've just kind of got to a point where I'm ready to kind of open my mind a little bit more to it so I ordered some hand dyed yarn back in December for a very specific project um, that I was hoping to do in January, cast on finish right up in January, but it just didn't happen and it's because it's a stitch pattern that I am still taking a break from. <laughs> <laughs> but the yarn is so incredibly beautiful I had to show it to you and it's from a dyer who I've been wanting to buy from for a very 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 long time she's quite well known now and I'm so glad that I managed to get hold of some because it's absolutely stunning this is the Olivia and Oliver fibers hand dyed in the Netherlands merino worsted and it's in the shade pumpkin spice which if you know me you'll know is you know just something that very much appeals to me and this is a tonal it's kind of got some darker moments but they're not like speckles it's definitely much more even I'll give you a close-up It's just a yummy brown. It's just the yummiest, yummiest brown. And I put it here because this is a clue as to its intention. I will tell you its intention. The intention behind this yarn is I want to make an eclair collar. Yes, an eclair collar. So just like this, really, with a roll neck, 
but obviously it won't be raglan because that won't work it will be kind of drop shoulder but it'll just be the front portion so that you can wear it underneath a coat like a scarf for warmth but it's not the whole jumper underneath there won't be any bubbles on the back because putting a coat over it is uncomfortable but there would be the option for bubbles on the front if you want to and i just wanted something i just wanted to take the opportunity to use a non-commercial yarn and because at the time i'm still quite a little bit scared of using hand dyed in garments I thought well this is the perfect opportunity for me to have a go with some hand dyed yarns use hand dyed yarn and a small business in my own patterns something I would like to do for 2023 moving forward is to um, use more unique yarns still kind of available yarns the along of Anna yarns is available all over the world now you can buy it directly from her website you can buy it from Etsy you can get it from beautiful knitters I think you can get it all over Europe it's a small business unique yarn but it's readily available so perfect I will be doing some I'll be doing a design with John Arben later on in the year again a British smaller business but readily available really amazing stuff just not that huge big commercial obviously i'm not adverse to big commercial i love phil kalana i think their yarns are brilliant but if it's appropriate for the garment and if i can i want to kind of you know spread my wings a little bit when it comes to yarn choice so that's why we have this and i just oh i really want to cast it on but i'm kind of like well by the time it would be ready to release, we're talking April, and are people gonna want a collar in April? I have this conversation with myself regularly about seasonality, and obviously releasing like a crop top in you know, my winter in my hemisphere. I know there are obviously two hemispheres, but actually when it comes to pattern sales, for me, it kind of, it makes more sense to go with the seasons that I am in, because the majority of my following is in my hemisphere obviously i've got southern hemisphere followers who i love dearly but the majority of my followers are america england europe so it makes more sense for me as a designer to go with those seasons so to release a collar in april may is probably not the best idea so this will probably be something i work on in the summer this would be great to work on in the summer because it won't be big it won't be heavy it won't be hot hopefully ready for an autumn release um, as well as the Eclair shawl that is something I've been working on and you can see a little bit about that in my last video but that's been put on hold for now as well and then I have another hand dyed yarn acquisition which has a very very clear intention I mentioned earlier when I bought this it's because I was looking for something else and this is what I was looking for this is from a dyer I've never used before or heard of it's fairy realm yarns and this is the kid silk mohair 7228 so a slightly higher silk content lace weight 459 meters per 50 grams so it is quite light you get a little bit extra for your money and i don't know how easy it's going to be to show actually this room feels really dark to me now but on camera it's actually coming up quite well and it's actually showing the yarn colors quite true to life the shirt the shade is wood pigeon and it's a blue with moments of purple and I have two of these because I'm going to be holding it with another strand of mohair probably a white mohair though I do need to swatch because I'm worried it will be too kind of like melange it might be that I need to get a very light grey or a very light blue um, but I wanted to be able to use the hand dyed mohair um, but not have to buy four skeins of it because I've spent quite a lot of money on yarn this month um, and by holding it with another plain strand it kind of tones it down a little bit as well this has a very clear intention this is going to be a cumulus blouse and it's going to be for my mama hi mom i have wanted to make a garment for my mum for so long and if you've been following me for a while you know that i have attempted to make garments for my mum a few times but they have never worked out i've chosen the wrong yarns i've chosen the wrong pattern like um I, i've tried but the problem is my mum's birthday is right at the end of december so making a garment unless i make it really far in advance is difficult because obviously christmas knitting and stuff that time of year sorry mum but your your birthday's at a rubbish time of year and i can say that because my birthday is at a rubbish time of year too <laughs> it's like three days after my mum um so 
I then thought, well, you know, okay, well, maybe Mother's Day or something. But one of the main things I have when it comes to making a garment for my mum is I feel like I can never... I'm so worried about making the wrong decision and choosing a yarn or a style or a garment that she doesn't actually like. I feel like it's quite tricky to know what my mum would choose. So my mum is fully aware that this is happening. There is no surprise here. There is no secret here. Basically, I made this. She really, really liked it. I was like, do you want one? She was like, yes, please. I was like, okay, but do you mind if I do a slightly different pattern that is in stockinette stitch? Because I don't think I can do the garter again so soon. Um, it's very, very similar. It's basically the same shape. Um, the sleeves are slightly shorter. And she was like, yeah, I really, really like that. I was like, How do you feel about mohair? She's like, yes, I love mohair. What kind of colour? And we basically discussed everything. I sent her a picture of the yarn. She absolutely loved it. We've discussed sleeve length. We've discussed size. She sent me her measurements. There is no fear in this gift knit whatsoever. And I'm so excited to cast it on because I know that I'm not going to be spending most of the time second guessing myself. So she knows it's coming. I'm going to aim to get it done for Mother's Day. But again, I'm not going to stress if I can't. Um, and currently this is the front runner for holiday knit, even though it's like mohair when I'm in like a country that's like 20, 25 degrees, two strands, rolling about on the floor, like, I don't know. Constructions wise, construction wise, it's a really great idea, but yarn wise, maybe, maybe not. So what I'm gonna do this week is I'm gonna swatch with this, maybe cast it on, see how I feel. And it might be that I just pop this in my, like, um, checked luggage, cause it's gonna take up like such little space in my luggage that it should be fine to take, but this probably won't be like the airplane project that I take with me. That's my other acquisition, and then I have one more to show you. Again, we're sticking with the blue, it's weird. I would probably say that blue is my least favorite color, apart from in the summer when paired with white. Like white shorts, blue top, white top, blue shorts, cute. I have ordered some of this. We have two different yarns here. We have Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, Knitting for Olive Merino. I ordered this one first with a very clear idea in my head. It was on like three millimeter needles. It was all ribbed. It was kind of like a tank top with some funny construction details. And I swatched for it and it was like, hell no, I cannot knit even a tank top on in rib. I, I can't, I just can't. <laughs> So I decided to order the same amount in the pure silk and I'm going to hold them together. Now I can't remember who first did this. I think it might have been my favourite thing to knitwear. I'm not too sure. I think it was quite a big designer that held the two together. And it was like a really interesting combination having the 50% merino, 50% silk. I've got a feeling that this is the exact combination that my friend Caroline used for her shorts and um, camisole that she test knit for my favourite things knitwear. It might be, I'll have to ask her. But this is the kind of blue that I love. And one is slightly darker than the other. The silk is slightly darker than the merino. But my plan now is to hold these together for a DK weight, but use like a six, five, six millimeter needle. And I'm gonna make a really loose gauge summer garment. I'm not too sure on the construction yet. I was shopping the other day and I was like, checking out what's in the high street kind of what's coming in because the summers are starting to come in and just kind of getting some inspiration and i do kind of have some thoughts but this will probably evolve quite organically i will swatch first and then quite often once i've swatched that helps me make quite a lot of design design decisions so that's what that's going to be the color by the way is dove blue and dusty dove blue so the merino is dusty dove blue and the silk is dove blue so there you go, that's everything I've been working on, everything I have bought in the past month or so. I'm gonna sip my coffee even though I know it's cold. I bet when I edit this, the light is gonna look so different at the beginning than it does at the end. What's the time? Oh yeah, it's five o'clock. I started this at half three. Ooh, I've got to go make the tea. So yeah, I'm gonna to have to round this up quite quickly, I think. Um, I would normally do like a little bit of nitty chat at the end, but I think because I recently did the What I Knit In A Week video, there was quite a lot of like personal life chat and what I've been up to and everything kind of thing. So if you would like to have a bit more of a catch up and you haven't seen that video yet, 
do go and check it out otherwise you will see me again in a few weeks time because obviously I'm going on holiday so I'll probably come at you again with probably another podcast actually maybe a vlog I'm not too sure I haven't decided if I'm going to film the holiday I don't think I want to because I don't want to pull myself out of it also my in-laws are going to be there it's mainly going to be you know the kids in the pool which I wouldn't like share online anyway um so I don't think I'm going to film the holiday but I will hopefully be back with another video for you after the holidays it may well be my what I in 2022 video traditionally I do it quite late I know most people have already done theirs I'm still deciding whether to not to do one or not I have watched a few now since I last spoke about it um, and they are very interesting to watch but I only find it interesting when it's somebody I haven't really watched much of yet <laughs> um, so yes it might be the 2022 video it might be another podcast I'm not too sure and while we're on that subject I just wanted to give you a little recommendation I've got a video I want to tell you about and it was only just been published and I've watched most of it but when I saw it pop up on my subscription feed I literally squealed out loud my lovely friend Hannah of Her Garden Knitwear who is a incredible designer I've tested for her I've knit her patterns I speak to her regularly she's a lovely lovely human being she has a lovely podcast she's so knowledgeable and so good at what she does and so good at talking about what she does um, I highly recommend you go and catch up on her podcast however she has just released a special video where she interviews my tech editor when I saw it, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to watch this. My editor is Frauke Urban of Urban Knitting, Urban Yarning, Urban Yarning. And she has tech edited every single one of my pattern. She's incredible. She's so good at what she does. And if you have any interest at all in the design process, and obviously specifically what a tech editor does, what it's like to be a tech editor, how it works, then I highly recommend you go and watch this video. It's been so interesting so far. Obviously, I kind of I know most of it because I'm part of that process myself, but it's just so interesting to watch and it's you know really well made such such a good video I'm going to finish watching the last 10 minutes whilst I'm cleaning up the mess of this podcast so I will link it below everything I've mentioned today will be linked below in the show notes it sometimes takes me a few days to get them uploaded um but at the very least you'll have like my website and Ravelry and all that kind of stuff down there it just might take me a while to add the links but with that, I'm going to round it up. I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me. I've missed you guys so much. I've really enjoyed filming this podcast. I feel like me again. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope you have a fabulous February and I'll see you in a few weeks. Bye-bye.